Last time we went over the governing equations, right? And in that case, we derived them for oil, gas, and water. Um, this time, now we have the initial conditions. We know how to start the simulator. How we, what are we going to solve, though, right? And how are we going to solve it? Because now, unlike the previous case where you're just inverting a matrix to solve for pressures, now you have coupled pressure and saturation. You have multiple equations, and they're coupled. And you know, one way to, would be to do it exactly like we did before, uh, where you sort of get everything you know, you know, just pull up all the terms you know on the left-hand side and, and, all the, and all the things you don't know on the right-hand side. And then you're, you, you have a set of matrix equations that you'd invert, but at every grid block, you'd have two unknowns, right? You'd have the pressure and the saturation, the pressure and the saturation you know, at every grid block. And so it'd be the matrix would be twice what twice the size of what it was before, right? Uh, and then you'd invert that thing. This is not commonly done. Uh, the method that's commonly used is called IMPES, implicit pressure, explicit saturation. And so let's uh, let's look at how we are sort of arrive at the equations for the IMPES formulation. <coughs> I don't mean to imply that they, they're different equations. They're the same. We just manipulate them a little bit. So here we're just going to consider water and oil. So we derived it already, but just to recap, the, the um, equation for mass balance of water is like that. The oil equation is very similar. And we're going to do a few manipulations. So um, we're going to first look at this term. And we're going to use the product rule to distribute the differentiation to all the terms uh, in that guy. So. that. And then on the, on the last two terms of this equation, <coughs> we're going to use, so this was a product rule. And then on the last two equations here, we're going to use the chain rule. Because both BO and uh, the, the formation volume factor of oil and the formation and the uh, porosity are functions of pressure. So the first term will be left alone.
So kind of two steps in one, but everybody see what we did there. We, since the formation volume factor and the porosity of functions of pressure, we, instead of D, D, P, D, T, we said D, D, P, uh, D, D, P, D, T, D, P, D, P. So this is the chain rule. We did this before, right? And then if you recall, the compressibility of oil was this guy, the compressibility of water was this, and the compressibility of the rock Is this. Right. So using those definitions and this expansion, so in, in other words, um, plug in this term back in up here, and then using these definitions that we d just defined or recapped, we have for oil. Um, let's, I'm going to go to the next page. And for water, that. Now, this is the reason I wanted to go to the next page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, first thing I'm going to do is multiply the first equation on both sides by BO over BW. Right, I can do that. I can multiply an equation. As long as I do it to both sides, I can do whatever I want. I multiply it on both sides. So the reason for that is that I want the BOs to cancel. I want BWs in the denominator for the next step. So, <laughs> and you can, you can see with that, I mean, just look at the first term. Then I have something that's similar, right? I have uh, phi over BW, partial SO, partial T, phi over BW, partial SW, partial, partial. So, I have sort of common denominators there. And so then if I just add the two equations together, then I get
So that's the left hand side. So this is just another way to, I mean, this is, the, this is the conservation of mass. It's just, you know, before we had conservation of the volume fraction of water and the conservation of the volume fraction of oil. Now we're adding them together. So it's the, it's the conservation of, you know, the mixture, mass of the mixture, right? And so uh, what's sort of over here on the left is like your compressibility terms, and then this is your in and out plus, you know, so this is a uh, flux in and out uh, plus oil produced, oil and water injected or produced. Okay. What about this first term? So I, I could I could rewrite that first term. Would everybody agree? I could rewrite it like this. You can just pull the differential operator and have it operate on each of them like that. Yeah, there, there'd also be the. So th this is the exact same thing as that, right? I can distribute this to both these guys, and I get back that up there. What's this? That's one. What's the time rate of change of one? Zero. So that whole first term. goes away. This whole second term, right, so this is like the compressibility of the oil and the compressibility of the water and the compressibility of the rock. So we're just going to call that CT phi over BW where CT is equal to SOCO plus SW, CW plus CR. Right? So <coughs> the compressibility of the, the, the total compressibility. So then finally, I guess I'll go to new page again. We have the overall mass balance. We have the overall mass balance. Can, can we solve that equation? What's the unknowns? Looks like it's just pressure, right? Yeah. 
but our CT is a function of saturation, right, as we defined it. So it's, if CT were constant, then, it, then this guy would just be the only unknown. I mean, everything else is just data, right, just inputs. The only unknown is the pressure field. So if CT were a constant, you could just solve that guy. Uh, true, yes. I mean, that's really, uh, I mean, technically it's unknown, but it's a constitutive relationship, right? I mean, if we, yeah, but yeah. The way it looks, though, it's written like, it, it looks like the only unknown is pressure, right? And so this is, we actually solved this equation implicitly for pressure, and then we need a second equation. Which just comes from the mass balance of the water, the volume fraction of the water. Right. And so we solve this it, it, uh, explicitly. So we have. Um, we solve this. Implicit for P, solve this explicit for S. And so this is called MPES. Implicit pressure. Explicit saturation. Impasse. So this saves a little time than if we were to if we were to couple them completely and solve everything implicitly, which you can do, and sometimes it may be necessary to do. Um, under certain conditions, but if you were to do that, then your you know your basically your matrix is twice as big that you have to invert, and inverting a matrix is the sort of most expensive thing in a in the solution scheme that you have to do, right? So you you don't want to double its size. It's it's you're going to quadruple the the expense at best. So uh, so we solve the first equation. <laughs> For the pressures, and then we use we just stick those pressures into this second equation, and update the saturation explicitly. So in the second equation, you don't have to invert a matrix, right? You're just using a, the saturations from the old time step, the pressures that you solve in the first one, to solve for the new saturations. want an extra 20 minutes to study for your exam? <laughs>